Okay, this video is in support of the 4348 tech, tech, Task Executor uh, project. So in this first uh, step, we're going to install or import, rather, two Eclipse projects into uh, an Eclipse workspace. So I have in front of me a Eclipse works, empty Eclipse workspace, and we'll import two projects. So go to file, oops, file, import, and then we have the existing project in the workspace. And we will change, well, two, one thing is important. By default, um, this import projects dialog starts out with select root directory, and this is incorrect. Um, if you browse to the zip file that I provided, the archive file, and import it, it seems to work, but it's the, pr the project will not be correctly installed. All right, so what we need to do is select this option for archive file, and this is set up from my previous video. So let's browse to here, and we are going to look for, which one should we do first? Dev project. So this, these um, zip files were provided, are provided on eLearning for you to download to your local PC. Open, and that's it. Finish. And we have that project installed. Let's install the other file. And uh, import again. Existing file. Still selected, we'll browse to the other. Testing, finish, and then uh, everything's set up. But uh, if there's an error, there shouldn't be. But what you need to make sure is if you go uh, click on this testing project, go to build path, configure build path, and then under projects, <clears throat> make sure that the testing project, so that with that essentially places the dev project onto the testing project's class path, so everything compiles. And uh, that's all needs to be done for importing the project. OK, this video doesn't really describe the implementation of the task executor service or the blocking FIFO um, that was described in class. What we are going to describe next is how to run the program to demonstrate it's working. Um, to do that, I need a working project. So I have imported into this Eclipse workspace my text executor implementation. And now I'm going to reconfigure uh, the testing project to reference uh, the completed rather than the incomplete student project. And so we'll go to projects and remove that one and um, add, hit class path, add, and I'm going to link it by project. Apply and close. Okay, so now we have um, now we can demonstrate the project working. There's not much to it. Um, we just look here in this package here. We have a task which you know we described uh, in class as um, executing. This is a task executed by the task runners in the um, task executor implementation in the thread pool. And I recall when this task is executed, it prints hello from thread and then some information. We'll see in a second. And then there's a task executor test, which drives the process, which is inserting uh, a certain number, a thousand or, few, or more or less uh, task into the executor. And as we mentioned, every time that happens, every time the task um, runner inserts a new task into the executor, it prints this message. So these two are important because you know, there's a balance of them and how they are printed determines how well the project or if the project is working. 
So I'm going to lower this to 200 just for the sake of uh, uh, running uh, running at 20% uh, of its other time and of its 1,000 element time, and doesn't really make any difference. So what we're going to do then, again, we're going to uh, insert 200 of the simple task into the executor, and they will be run, and we'll observe their output on the console. So, yep, console selected. And we select the ex executor test, and we run as Java application. And now it's, you know, printing a bunch of messages. Okay, so let's... I'm going to select those and um, and uh, bring them up in. Um, I'm a little I'm working on screen here for a second. Bring them up in uh, Notepad because it can show me line numbers. So as we described in class, and I'll briefly describe here, your output, the output generated when running these these two test classes should generate a uh, similar um, output. Um, keep in mind that, you know, we will be running your implementation and checking the output, you know, on uh, in real time. But the point is that we, as we look at the tasks are being uh, added in sequential order, zero through um, up down here to 199 or 200. And and intermix between them are the activations, the task, um, you know, the test task running their hello from thread messages. So as we described earlier, the size of the FIFO is fixed at 10 elements, as, you know, as we described in the constructor. So the first 10 elements are being sent to threads, 0 through 9. 11 through 19 are in the queue, and then the queue is blocked full, waiting for task to be completed, and which we see here um, being run here. And the interesting thing is the tasks are executed in, uh, not in the same order that they were inserted. You can see here that task 6 finished, although task 6 was uh, inserted 6, it is the first to finish, then task 0, 2, so they're being um, scheduled these threads um, are being scheduled and executed in a kind of a random order um, and there's some more diagnostics here uh, the number of activations is increasing for every uh, every activation although it's still not in the same order so this was the first activated second and so on again this pseudo random ordering and the threads are being activated and uh, are scheduled in a random order. So this, you know, these again, the what we're looking for is to see this sort of pseudo ex random execution of the. I'm not saying because it's not a purely random execution of the task, um, but it's also not in the order that they were inserted into the to, into the executor or into the FIFO. And so on, just an intersperse between adding task and running or finishing the activation of tasks back and forth until uh, the uh, last task has been you know has been added, and then we see another twenty um, executions. Also, notice that the number of lines in this output is four hundred, which is an indication of everything's working correctly, that we have 200 inserts and 200 activations, just as we'd expect for a total of 400 lines. Um, the, there is a file that we provided um, that gives you the same idea. So from the, in the, in the uh, pro, uh, project materials, looking at this here, there's a, again, an example of the same activations and, and running and so on to give you something you can refer to although this was executed a thousand times i believe uh, down here 2000 now it's two not two it's 2004 and not 2000 because we have those oops those four come on four one two or yeah four lines added at the beginning that wouldn't be there 
in your console output. All right, that's how you run and uh, evaluate your output for correctness. And let's move on. At this point, you will have um, implemented your task executor service and FIFO in your student dev project, and you would have tested it, its uh, execution using the testing project, and you would um, be happy with the output as we described in the last section. And so this step is you need, to, at the next step, you need to export your development project as a jar file, and you will be submitting that jar, jar file for evaluation. Um, so the way we do that is you will uh, export the, uh, your student project um, as a um, under Java and a jar file, but um, this is an in, this is an incomplete student dev project. So we'll be exporting my implemented. So again, export and uh, jar file next, and then we need to select where we want to place it. So. You'll browse to the directory. Now, I've already done this once before, but here uh, all I really ask is that you have the team number and the jar file name so I can keep things straight. Team 99, text executor release, whatever you're happy with. And it might be spelled out in the project description, but anyway, team number is important. We'll save it and then we'll finish. And then it'll, because we're overriding an existing copy, yes. Okay, now. What we need to do is we need to reconfigure the testing project so it references the jar file and no longer references the project. So we can, so chicken or egg problem, I'm going to um, first do this. So here is the jar file I just exported, and I'm going to drag it into uh, the student testing project. So now the project, so I just dragged and dropped it on top of the project and then it just added it to the uh, to the project and so I am uh, then going to um, modify the class path so I'm going to build path or class path build path and do a configure build path so the first thing is we need to remove the student executor dev project uh, the student dev project from your class path. Now again, minus task executor, but yours would be student. And so we'll remove that. And then we're gonna switch over to the um, class path and add, so we switch over to libraries, select class path, add jar, and then under the task executor testing where we just drop the uh, your exporter jar file, we will find you know, T99, and we'll add that, and we will apply and close, and everything should be uh, hunky dory. You shouldn't see any compilers. Then, what we want to do is just repeat the uh, test we ran before the, to observe that the output we saw when we were testing against our dev project is now duplicated when we run against our. A jar file and as you can see it is and so we would consider that to be a successful export and uh, we're ready to move on to the final uh, I hate to say phase but uh, to uh, finish up the project all right Okay, so in this last section of the video, we're going to describe how to uh, submit the project for grading. So the project must be bundled into a zip file. Um, there is to be one submission, one zip file per team. Uh, make sure you put your team number on that file so I can easily figure out and, and organize the submissions for grading into that archive um, you have to place your your evaluation document that we talked about in class i don't have a copy of it i think i might have it here over here so the um 
task executor team evaluation by you know reading put your team number on your copy and then in the uh, document your name and net id there's only two there's only two members per team now so your names and net ids what uh, portion of the system you worked on and also put your name and net ids in this folder in this uh, table as well where we'll be evaluating and placing your grade also uh, identify your team all right so into that archive you place the completed evaluation document uh, the jar file that we just tested with that you exported and tested with and the um and then the, your project uh, you need to export your project into a zip file so let's look at that now so here is your completed project of course you won't have text executor but you will need to not the testing project only the dev project you just export and then back to general archive oops archive file next and then select the folder you wish to drop it into so we'll, i'm putting it in my same one and we'll call this you know um task executor um we could just give it the name student dev project well no that wouldn't work <laughs> student execute student uh you don't want to overwrite your original copy so all i do is i'll put um dev team you know your team number 99 and save and then so with your project selected and with the name of your zip file so uh, you finish and then if we go look in that directory i have it off camera here one second we now have we should have right there that zip file and it contains your your eclipse project including the source code that i need to see in order to uh give you uh, to, for, for me to um to complete uh you know to evaluate your submission okay so that with those three things um you can submit build and submit your zip file and you're done that's it